Hello, conscious friends. <laughs> what a beautiful day it is. Um, I wanted to take a minute to talk about something that was brought up in a conversation with one of our friends yesterday, and that is this idea of radical honesty. What the heck is that? Radical honesty. Um, so mostly when you ask people about honesty and what does it mean to be honest, oftentimes you'll hear one of two things. One being, I'm really honest about what I think of other people and what they should be doing because I know stuff, right? Um, so if you're anything like me, I definitely did think that honesty was that at one time. And then there's the other version of honesty, which is more like, I'm gonna tell you the truth about some action that I did. Um, maybe I gossiped behind your back. Um, you know, maybe I harmed you in some way in the past. Maybe I stole money from you. Maybe I did something at some time that, you know, impacted you in some way, and now I'm gonna tell you the truth about it, right? So those are both, um, well, I don't know if they're both great, but <laughs> they're both two versions of honesty and radical honesty is something that's so much different. Um, so Rudy and I coach in this way where we really encourage couples to bring this practice into the partnership, right? So if we can't do it in our home and we can't do it with the person that we love the most, then are we really, are we really doing it in the world? Um, I don't know, maybe some are, um, but we definitely encourage, you know, couples to, to be doing this. So radical, I just want to read you the definition of radical. It says relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something, relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something, far reaching and thorough. And honesty is the um, practice of being honest and it really ties into integrity which is the state of being whole and so when we look at radical honesty the first thing to really understand is that there's so many layers of that right when I'm in the world and I'm interacting with people how much of the time am I just reacting from this surface level place of saying what I think that you want me to say so that I can get you to like me or you know something like that and then underneath that layer is the fear that you're not gonna like me, right? There's something that I feel like I need to cover up or hide and keep from you so that I can continuously get this exchange of love or appreciation. And underneath that is that wholeness. Underneath that is that fundamental peace. There's a book I love and um, it says that in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. And you know, I would go on to say that we are the fundamental idea of God. And if you look at every theology, there is some version of that. So in that state, how do I even get to that state? First of all, it requires me being radically honest about where I am in this moment. And so if I were to pause in this video and just to say, okay, if I'm being radically honest, um, I have fear about posting this video. I'm scared that people are gonna think that this is dumb. There's a part of me that thinks that people are gonna judge me or not like this or, um, you know, all of those things, that, that voice that wants to keep me small, that's addicted to my story. And there's that piece of not wanting to shine also because I'm afraid the people that love me or are in my life right now are gonna leave. You know, so that's radical honesty. That's vulnerability. That's me being transparent and expressing that part of myself that, you know, my ego wants to just keep safe and keep on lockdown so that you can't hurt me. But if I never call that out, then there's not ever space for something else to show up because all I'm doing is I'm being in the world, interacting from this pretend place, covering up that other pretend version of me that's all blocking the real version of me. <laughs> And I would invite you to consider that most people are interacting from that place right now. And so how do we start engaging in these conversations that are radically honest? You know, how do I um, call my best friend and tell her that I'm scared that she's better than me? Right? Like, hey, I, I totally just got triggered. I saw something amazing that you did. And there's a part of me that I'm so happy for you. And there's another part of me that I'm just like so scared that you're gonna become amazing and I'm never gonna be as amazing as you, and then you're gonna leave, right? So there's always this kind of tone of being abandoned or rejected or 
you know, not enough, right? That not enoughness, the illness of not enoughness um, that plagues us. And so when I just call that, and by the way, I'm not saying it for any other reason than just to say it. Because when I say it, then it moves out of the way and then my heart reopens and then I'm available for real connection with somebody. So I'm not saying it for her to fix it. I'm not saying it for her to stop shining. I'm just saying it to bring it out into the open so that it leaves and then I can be fully present and there's another version of me right underneath that. Um, so this is what we do in our home. You know, my husband and I, we do it all the time. We have to call this stuff out all the time, especially as we're growing and our marriage is expanding and our business is expanding. There's a lot of fears that come up because that old story is so not interested in our shining in this way. And we just keep calling it. We just keep calling it. So I invite you to look at one place today, one conversation, one interaction, where you can be radically honest, say the thing that you're scared of, and see if it sets you free.